Bertemu kembali rantau Asia Tenggara dijangka jana pertumbuhan penggabungan dan pengambil alihan MNA yang paling banyak untuk tempoh tiga tahun akan datang. Menurut laporan Barometer Keyakinan Modal Global Ernst Young EY edisi ke-23, faktor yang memacu selera pengambil alihan ini adalah kebimbangan mengenai tarif dan aliran perdagangan, pengukuhan teknologi, bakat serta keupayaan baru dan pertumbuhan ke dalam sektor atau aktiviti perniagaan yang bersebelahan. Daripada perspektif Malaysia, aktiviti M&A di negara ini dijangka mendapat momentum memandangkan banyak syarikat mula memasang posisi masing-masing dan melabur semasa peningkatan ekonomi. Untuk membincangkan berkenaan kajian berkenaan untuk Malaysia, kita bersama Premen Menon, rakan kongsi EYPLT untuk khidmat nasihat transaksi. Izinkan saya meneruskan dalam bahasa Inggeris. Premen, you said um, in general Malaysian corporates are still looking to fill gaps in capabilities and also remap their direction in the post-pandemic world. Share with us what are some of the key areas we can expect and are Malaysian uh, corporates uh, taking a bit too long to um, perhaps remap their direction in the post-pandemic world? If so, why? Okay. Uh, hi, hi, Rizal. Morning. Um, look, I think uh, you know, in terms of the key areas that that you know, I think Malaysians are or Malaysian corporates are looking to infill. Uh, you know, it's, it's largely around uh, digital and technology, mm-hmm. uh, and and also looking to invest in talent. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think uh, you know, with with this, there's always um, it, 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 it's a long process in the sense that you know, if you've not necessarily talked about it in the past. Uh, you know, uh, having to go through the motions takes some time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what what COVID has necessarily done is it's proven that uh, you know some of these trends that that have existed in the past uh, are now accelerating, and you know I think uh, corporates in general and 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 Malaysian corporates included uh, are, are trying to sort of catch up in in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I mean, your question as to why why are they taking a bit longer? I, I think um, you know, and, and and we're seeing a lot. There's there's a large number of corporates that are looking inward, uh, you know, re-looking at their balance sheets, re-looking at their assets, and and necessarily understanding do these assets, do these uh, investments, um, still uh, remain relevant uh, in the post-pandemic world, right? And I and I suspect that's that's taking a bit longer. Uh, I, I feel, you know, it, it's actually one of timing, uh, you know, and, and I, I would imagine in the next few months, uh, we, we would expect to see uh, some clear decisions uh, in, in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, your, your point on, you know, how, how can they necessarily, you know, accelerate that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel, look, it, it's really one uh, of, of, you know, accelerating that strategic review. But, but it, I think more importantly, it's about being bold, right? It's mm-hmm. being bold to make uh, certain investment decisions. You know, I, I think a number of these investments would have been made in the past uh, in, you know, when, when the economy was in a, a, a different light, right? You know, mm-hmm. everybody's talking about the post-pandemic world and how things have changed. Uh, what I would say is, you know, uh, you know, for corporates, not to be too precious about what necessarily happened in the past. And, and really looking forward to to how they can um, remap uh, their strategic direction in in the uh, post pandemic world. Right. So, I, I guess in a nutshell, you know, they've got to make some bold okay. decisions, uh, and they've got to make it quickly. And, and Praman, you you mentioned they are uh, the executives are a bit uh, bolder, and, and and according to your press release, executives in Southeast Asia are emboldened to drive internal transformation, uh, both for digital and cost reduction and their M&A. So, so they become a bit more bold to chart uh, their ways forward, right? What do you think would further help them to, to carry on this task of, of planning their way forward? Uh, I, I, I think it, it's one of uh, re-looking at their capital, mm-hmm. uh, re-looking at their, at their balance sheets and necessarily understanding, um, you know, how, how they could redeploy capital, right? Uh, and and that would mean recycling capital, right? Mm-hmm. You know, going back and looking at what's non-core, as I said, uh, and and then you know making that hard decision. You know, do we necessarily divest? Now, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of times people talk about non-core, and and you know they they think about an underperforming asset. Now, mm-hmm. that's not necessarily the case. Uh, 
uh, you know, and I, and I think when corporates look at these assets, they really got to think in the context of, you know, could somebody else uh, derive better value from that asset than themselves? Uh, in, in which case, you know, um, th there would be a, a buyer for that asset that, that's willing uh, to pay a bit more for that than it might be worth to you. Okay, and EY also expects uh, acquisition uh, will center around bulk on acquisitions and an increased focus on acquiring operation capabilities. Tell us more about this. Which sectors or sector do you believe uh, would perhaps witness more M&A activities? Yeah, so, you know, the, the respondents came back uh, from the survey and, you know, I think resoundingly 100% said they wanted to invest uh, in, in the technology sector, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I think that's consistent throughout, uh, you know, uh, the, the findings, but not just Malaysia, right? I think, you know, everybody's looking to invest in technology, uh, you know, in Southeast Asia uh, globally. Um, you know, advanced manufacturing, consumer, healthcare, these are, these are areas that, that have also featured quite strongly with, with some 50% of respondents saying uh, this was an area they wanted to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I think, look, you know, COVID has, has affected uh, businesses uh, uh, not symmetrically. Uh, there have been a, a number of winners and, and, and losers. I mean, you know, no surprises, the hospitality and, and leisure industry has suffered. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I feel that, you know, aside from, from technology, uh, you know, the winners, uh, like healthcare, for example, would, would see a lot of uh, activity. Uh, but, but equally, you know, prices or valuations in these sectors have, have also gone up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I feel what we would necessarily see are uh, um, acquisitions in adjacencies, right? I, mm -hmm. I think businesses that continue to serve the healthcare sector, uh, um, even, even logistics for that matter, you know, last mile e-commerce has done really well. Uh, but potentially, you know, uh, last mile players, uh, last mile logistics players, are now seeing a bump up in activity and, and you know, could be an area of investment as well. Let's talk about partnerships. Uh, partnerships, uh, according to EY, will potentially be a new dynamic that will be fast growing as Malaysian respondents appear opening up to partnering with competitors uh, to create a new ecosystem solution. Th this is very interesting. Will it be, be between companies in different sectors, um, se the same sectors? Um, what value add will this uh, bring to the market? Yeah. So I, I completely agree, right, uh, Rizal? I think, you know, there's often talk about M&A mergers and acquisitions and, and so forth. But, you know, the new dynamic that is that's necessarily coming up is, is one of partnership. And, and, and why partnership is particularly interesting is it, it somewhat levels the, the playing field. Uh, you know, if you were having to go out and do an acquisition, uh, you know, there's a significant amount of capital that needs to be deployed. Uh, mm -hmm. And then more importantly, uh, you've got to integrate that into your business, right? I, I, you know, I think acquiring is only part of it, but but integration of uh, uh, a target into your business is, is just as important. Mm -hmm. Now, what what the partnership model does is is that it allows uh, a, a number of companies to to come together to form an ecosystem that that would generally allow a lot of them to scale, right? Mm -hmm. uh, typically, only larger companies have had. Uh, you know, the, the advantage or the capital to go out and acquire. Mm -hmm. But, you know, by, by a number of smaller companies coming together or even together with a big company, right, uh, that, that is that opportunity to scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, to your question, you know, do, does it happen in the same sector? Does it happen in different sectors? It, th there's no hard and fast rule, right? I think mm -hmm. as long as it's sort of win-win, uh, you know, it, 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 it can happen in, in, in a number of areas, right? It could be... Uh, you know, it could be with competitors. You know, as I said, the survey, uh, some some 33% uh, of, of the respondents were open to, mm -hmm. to developing an ecosystem with their competitors. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, I think that that's a very interesting dynamic. Okay. Uh, it, it, it could happen with uh, someone that is not necessarily in your space, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, arguably, if you look at the likes of Grab uh, and, and some of the... Uh, you know, the vendors, you know, that, that's, a, you know, that's a partnership that works, right? 
On that note, we thank you very much, Prime Menon Rakan Kongsi EYPLT, Himat Nasihat Transaksi, membincangkan berkenaan dengan laporan barometer keyakinan modal global Ernst Young EY edisi ke-23. Kita akan berhenti berehat sekali lagi kembali selepas ini.